Welcome back to my channel, Traveling Taylor, and I'm going to be doing some Canva tutorials. Today we're going to start with just the basics. So if you're brand new to the platform and you need help getting set up or figuring out how to navigate the software, that is what we are doing today. So let's dive right in. Once you log into your Canva account, it will look something like this. So they have changed their layout a couple of different times, but overall it really pretty much stays the same. So you will see over here on the left hand side, your name, as well as some of, you know, just the home, the home menu. Um, you can search very quickly right here. So say you're like, I need to create a YouTube thumbnail, type in YouTube. And it will actually give you the different um, options that you can choose from and it will tell you the sizes. So it's really awesome about Canva is they keep updated with the different sizes that change for Facebook and Instagram and any new platform that comes up. And you can make sure that you're always, you know, creating the right size design. You can start with blank designs here. All of your designs will be kept in a folder here. So you can see I have my YouTube thumbnails, I have Pinterest pens, Pinterest boards, IG, all my blog posts. I run all my photos through Canva first to make sure that they're sized properly to not slow down my site. Um, my freebies are all right here. So I create all of my freebies in Canva as well. Um, resizing of pictures, I mean just everything. So it really is a wonderful, wonderful tool for so many different things. And then down here you can see all the templates. So if you have trouble designing kind of like I do and you're not like super creative, no worries. Canva has got you covered and you can either pick from one of the mini templates um, and again they will come out in the proper size for whatever it is that you are creating. So flyers, posters, infographics, social media, um, resumes. You can create your own resume in here as well. Um, they Insta stories. Um, they've got some designs created for you that you can start with and then kind of build from there. And then once you get more comfortable, you'll, you'll start to create your own as well. So when you first log into your account, one of the things that you might want to go ahead and do is update your brand kit. So whether you're in the free plan or the paid plan, which I do have a paid plan, but regardless of your plan, you can go ahead and add some consistencies among your kit. So you can see I've added three different versions of my logo up here. I have added my brand colors. So that makes it really simple to just be like, okay, great. Yes, this I want to be my orange and I don't have to go and grab the hex code over and over. You can set your brand fonts for a heading, subheading, body, um, and then I believe it's only on the paid plan that you can actually upload different fonts as well. And I use playlist caps a lot, but that is one thing that you'll want to go do, and it's super simple. I actually am going to change this to everything is like searchable. It's really easy. I'm going to change that to caps. Perfect. Okay, so after you've done that, you'll want to head back to your home page and go ahead and just start creating your first design. Again, if you don't feel comfortable creating something from scratch, go ahead and grab a template down here. But for us, we're going to go ahead and start with a blank design and we're going to click on Instagram post. So here we are with a blank Instagram design. So you can see it's a square, so it'll fit perfectly into your Instagram account. Up here, I do like to rename my designs, so I, I know what they are because I tend to group them. Um, so for this, we'll just say um, IG post because it's not a story, it's going to be a post. And if you didn't start with a template, they're also going to give you different templates over here. Coronavirus ones are very popular right now. And um, they might have love or food or sale if you're a business that has retail, Halloween, birthday, summer, because summer's coming up. So these are really fun. Let's just go ahead and start with a template so I can sh just show you some of the basics of things that you can do. Right here, this is an image. So you'll see right away, you can either enlarge it 
or make it smaller so you can change the size very easily. So also if you didn't want to make it smaller or larger but maybe you wanted to make it more square instead of rectangle, you would take this horizontal line and you could actually cut it in half. And so you can see the pineapple isn't quite centered and so if you double click on it, it'll show you the whole image and so you can actually just drag it down that looks good. Click off of it. And there you go. Now you have a, you know, it's still a rectangle, but it's a smaller rectangle than it was before. The other thing you can do is maybe you wanted to center it up with these lines instead of having it off centered. You can see every time I scroll over an element, so either this picture, this background color, or the text, it creates a, um, an outline and that tells you the the size and the edge of the image so if you say click on this and you were to move it you'll see I now have purple lines and those purple lines are for centering the picture is actually centered up against the middle of the image right up against the edge but you know what I really want it to be centered with the background color so I keep moving it and you'll notice that the purple lines changed. It's very intuitive to know what it is you might be trying to do. So if I do a little bit, I'm like, oh yes, perfect. Now I know that the pineapple is censored and we're gonna put it right there. And actually I wanna put it up a little bit and you'll see there's horizontal and vertical lines to make sure that it is centered. So I go up and I want it right dab in the middle, just like that. Perfect. So the other thing you can do is you can change colors of things. So I mean, turquoise is beautiful, but it's not my brand colors. So if I click on this element right here, which is just a square, you'll see this color pops up over here. If I click on that, then you'll see my brand colors right here that I put into my brand kit. And you'll see photo colors. So if you want to match the photo colors, you can do that. And they also just have a really awesome, just like default colors. <laughs> These are going to be your basics black, white, red, blue, things that you might want to use frequently. And then if you have multiple images in a document, it'll show you all the document colors. But for this, um, you know what, I'm just going to use my brand colors. So I'm going to click on orange and I'm going to make it nice and orange like that. Now let's look at the text. So if we click on the text, it's going to give you again, a lot of different options that you can change. So you can change the font right over here. Um, so Salima, you know, that's not a font that I use very often. Um, I do prefer playlists, so either playlist caps or playlist script. So we'll change it to playlist script. I do want to change this color though, because that is also not a brand color for me. So I'm going to make it this light blue. Cool. And I'm going to make this navy. Actually, I don't want to make that blue. I want it to stand out a little bit more. So we'll make it orange. Oh, so fun. Okay. Now, these are a little close. So I am going to move this text over so that there's no overlapping. And down here, you know what? I want to make it the name of my blog. So if I double click on it and I move my mouse, I can actually change the text. So I don't need it to say that. I just want to put my website name here. So just delete. And I'm going to change it to orange again. Great. And then this I want to change to blue because that is my color. Now you'll notice that my color blue and this color blue do not match. And that is because this element has been um, transparentified. That is not a word, but you go over here. That's what transparency, that's what this is. So you can see it's only at 20%. So it's almost completely gone. Um, but I want it to be a little bit brighter. So I am going to increase the transparency so that it's a little bit more noticeable. Perfect. And this down here, actually, you know what? I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'll make it 32. Now you can see what happened here is it wrapped around. All you have to do to make it a singular line again is to take this horizontal bar and drag it longer so that it fits into the square. And then I'm going to place it a little bit more centered down here at the bottom. Cool. So now that I have it all together, I'm gonna to move the pineapple back down a little bit so that it is a little bit more 
balanced as an image. So there you go. That is really how quick you can make a, a social media post or anything like that. If you didn't like this pineapple, like pineapple doesn't fit your brand, that is totally fine as well. You can actually go over here um, and you can click on photos. So Canva has a large stock of stock photos that you can use. They'll have trending down here that you can that you can maybe pick from. Maybe those work for you or your recently used will also be here. And um, let's say you just wanted a different pineapple post or photo. That's totally fine. Let's just see what our other options are. Ooh, I like the pineapple with the glasses. So to do this, all I have to do is drag, click and drag this photo over here. And it's gonna go into this square because it has a photo square. Again, double click on it, move it over, center him up. You can see there's lines guiding you so you know which is center. Unclick, click off, <laughs> there you go. That's super fun. I like Little Pineapple Man quite a bit. The other thing you can do is say you wanted it to be a circle instead of a rectangle. That's totally fine too. Um, you have these grids down here, so you can actually add multiple photos to a post. Um, you have general shapes. So that's what this is right here. This is just a rectangle shape. If you were just to click on this square, and you can see it kind of just adds it gray to the middle, no big deal. But if I wanted to say I could even add, add another square over here and move it over, make it bigger. I want to change it to be my gray color and then I want it to be behind this photo so I'm going to click on position and send it backwards just like that so now I've created a box layer and actually you know it's a little too dark so let's go ahead and change that transparency as well and that looks a little bit more fun so here you go but we were talking about the pineapple photo. So if you wanted to make it say a circle or any of these other shapes, they have phones and computers. So if you're trying to maybe sell a product or you have a podcast or whatever it is, um, you can actually just click right on that image. Again, you can resize it to be whatever size you want. You want to move it over here. And click on photos. Your search bar is still there. Let's add another fun, another fun pineapple picture. So you could do that pretty easily just like that. This is also really good if you do have like a podcast and you want to add guest images to your designs each week. So say you have a different podcast cover. What you'd want to do is use this frame picture element. And then each week, all you have to do is drag and drop the, the new guest photo over, you can keep the rest of the design completely the same, and then you can download it. So downloading is in a different video, but today we're just kind of going over the basics of Canva. So you know what? I don't really like that circle up there in the top. So I'm just going to click on it and hit the delete key and it's gone. Um, so I could change out the photo or if I want the element gone, I just hit delete again. And it's completely gone. You know, I also don't really like this rectangle. It doesn't really add to it, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that as well. So there we go. There is our image. And if you needed to add some additional text, you could always come over here. And your brand kit fonts will be right here, so you can quickly add them over to the side. Or if you want to do some font combos, which this that's what this is, with the all caps and the script. It's actually just a combo that's down here. So you can always start there and then kind of figure it out from there. So yeah, I, I just recommend kind of playing around. You can change the background photos. So right now this background is white, but you can make it um, a gradient. You could make it a picture. You can make it a texture or something like that. And then you also have the option to upload your own photos, which I do very, very often, as you can see, and use them in your picture. So say I wanted to use my own photo instead of this pineapple, I would again, just drag and drop, no big deal. Ah, it looks like there's actually a filter on this. So um, to edit filters, you would go up here. Cali filter is currently on. All I have to do is click on none, 
and that is gone. You can also add effects. You can adjust the brightness and contrast of the photo. Um, you can crop it if you need to, um, which sometimes is necessary. If it's on the wrong side, you can always flip it horizontally, which vertically is not going to make a lot of sense. But sometimes if you have a photo and you need it to be moved around, you can totally do that. So there's really a lot of features within a Canva and design. And as you can see, it's really easy. It's super user friendly and stick around for additional uh, Canva tutorials that I will be coming out with later this week. My channel is Traveling Taylor. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial.